as I establish this truth, three men climbed the mountain. Only one man was holding the rod. Others followed him. Climbed with him. But they knew he's one man. That's giving the mandate to hold the rod. When you follow well, where grace climbs, you climb. Don't desire his rod. Desire is God. Where grace climbs, you climb. You see, the arrogance of the Pentecostal church, of Pentecostal circle, <laughs> is that they don't know that God judges everyone who breaks the edge. Whether you are orthodox, whether you are out of the church, you are in the church, he that breaks the edge, the serpent by. So do you know there is no VIP HIV? There's no presidential cancer. There's no VIP HIV. The same attack, the same cancer, the same tumor that attacks the poor, attacks the rich. The same infirmity that comes on one, comes on another. There were three men that climbed the mountain. Only one had the rod. You see, when you are aware, please don't forget this. When you are aware that you are not sent to everyone, you will then realize nobody can take your members. Whoever left you left. They didn't take him. <laughs> my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. Anyone not following is not your sheep. Nobody can take your members because you are not sent to everybody. I, I wish I said something. Those you are sent to, they go nowhere. Those you are... There are members for a season. There are members for a reason. There are members for a reason. There are some for a season. But there are some for a lesson. There are members that God positioned in your life. You see those things, you don't learn them in Bible school. One day something happened to me, to a member, I said, what are we supposed to call this course in Bible school? This is not pneumatology, this is not theology, this is not spiritology, this is not end time study, this is not eschatology. What is this kind of study? Experientiology. Am I communicating now? Am I talking to somebody here? This man, do you know? There is a way your heart is positioned. Around them, Aaron and Hall. Who was Hall? We know who Aaron was. Aaron was the elder brother. Who was Hall? Hall. You want to hear this? Or oh, you didn't know this? Caleb. You know Caleb? That great guy we call Caleb, who said, "Give me this mountain." Later married Miriam. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, you didn't know. Hall was a son of Caleb. Hall was the grandfather of Bazalel. You see that? Who went up with him? Aaron. Hall, nephew. Aaron, brother. We don't do family ministry. But we get to a point where ministry is family. We do not do family ministry. But ministry grows to a point it becomes family. When members see their pastor like their biological father, this man has affected me much for me to just call a spiritual father. This one is a father that I will stay with as he grows, I grow. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody right now? There is a way. Do you know what Elisha said? You look at Naaman. A Gehazi rather. He said this leprosy. It will follow him and his seed forever. 
Do you know where Elijah was? Double portion of the spirit of Elijah. So his words were heavy. Oh, you didn't say that? Second Kings 5, 27. He said, the leprosy that was on Nehemiah shall cleave unto thee and thy seed. For what? For what? For what? For what? For what? And he went out of his presence, what? But do you know, as he left his presence, as the word fell, Kayasi became a leper. He left his presence with leprosy. As he walked out, leprosy left him. He wasn't leprous forever. Leprosy left him. Ah. Why will he say that? Second Kings 8 verse 4. The king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God. With leprosy, you cannot appear before the king. Elijah was Elijah was safe. This was a sickness that was to have been on his seed forever. But yet, this man assessed kings. Assessed kings. Why? God's servant had spoken that this will follow ever. Yet, the man knew a key to reverse the course. What did he, what did he do? Second Kings 8 from verse 4. Bring it up. And the king taught with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha has done. So a man that gave you leprosy, you are not supposed to have a good report about him. But hear what Elisha said. Let me show you what the leprosy left. And the, verse 5, come on. It came to pass as he was telling the king how he restored a dead body to life. A man gave him leprosy. A man cursed him. But Elijah said, I love this man too much to speak ill of him. God saw the position of his heart. God said, leprosy, go back to where you came from. I love this man. He may, be, he may have been angry. He may have executed pain and judgment. But he had, he had a grace on his life that I cannot deny. People will leave a church. They know the man is called. They have been healed under his commission. They have seen miracles happen. But the anger in their heart controls their mouth. This is a... I, I, I wish I was talking to somebody here. Bring up the scripture. Restore the dead body. Cry to the king for a house and for a land. As Angeas said, my lord, this is the woman and this is her son. This man <laughs> was a man that was cursed. Was a man that made a mistake. And the king opened his mouth, the servant opened his mouth and said, Leprosy forever. But leprosy left him. Because with leprosy, you cannot stay among the camp of people. With leprosy, you cannot assess the community of men. This man did not just assess men, he assessed royalty. Why? Because the state of his heart, the position of his heart, sir, there are unctions you get even without being prayed for. Even with our hands laid on you. The Bible says, and the mantle fell. It is Elijah dropped it. It fell. There is the state of your heart under an anointing. The reason why we have so much disaster in the body of Christ is that we have ingrates everywhere. Ingrates. So the blessing is not left behind. Am I communicating? People are hustling. People are selling things. No, sir, that's not God. No, that's not God. No, hustling without grace is hostility. That's not God. Oh, you say, what's he talking about? That's not God. You don't save for ministry. You don't gather money for ministry. Oh, you don't understand? Matthew chapter 10 verse 9. Matthew 10 verse 9. Matthew 10 verse 9. When he sent them, he said, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. As I'm sending you, don't, pro don't gather anything because the supply is in your going. 